Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Humans are the best friends and the worst enemies. Written by TCGM. You're facing a terrestrial issue, and your solution is to invade the humans. Are you off your fecking neurons? I can see that you're serious about this, so I shall give you this warning once and declare that none amongst my allies of species shall help you. We are not suicidal as you clearly are. There is a saying among some species in many, many galaxies. If you go to Earth, do so as a friend or not at all. Yes, you may be a superior technologically and have a vastly large army for now. Your ships are indeed, in fact, far stronger than their exploratory ships the humans seem to contend to travel the galaxies in. I do agree with that. For now. Did you know that humans have the highest adaptability index seen in the known galaxy since the fall of the Devarful? I thought not, since you seem foolish enough to take this on. And no, I do not speak of habitability. Humans are limited by their death world's physiology. Though they can withstand harsh conditions much better than most of us non-humans, they are still locked to a fairly temperate climates without aid of their technology. Specialist species evolved to suit their harsh environment succeed far beyond where humans can. No, I'm talking about their cultural, ideological, and technological adaptability. Yes, technological. Humans are so good at adapting and reverse engineering other technologies. There are honestly projects taking place checking to see if they are a designed race. Possibly by the very devolvel they look so alike. They have not found anything yet and it does seem to be a coincidence. But we all know how coincidence can come back and eat you during waste excretion. And their societal and ideological traits are uh, on their face slow to change until they suddenly aren't. Let me show you, before I finish my warning, what a human homeworld, Earth, looked like a while ago. Go ahead, take a look. Not much, is it? Other than its status as a death will and obvious racial differences, Earth and humanity look much like one of our planets a thousand or two thousand years ago. Very little spaceflight, no FTL, no fusion, and certainly nothing else that we take for granted in the modern galactic age. Only one planet truly their own, and another just beginning colonization procedure. That picture was taken 20 years ago, right before they were discovered by the Reshan, right before the invasion. You may notice they are not around anymore. You may also notice that Earth is much more advanced now, and that the humans have spread far. Perhaps not, having sat upon your high thrones and only deigned to retake a look at the galaxy when you wish to conquer one of us again. Perhaps you think this irrelevant and that nothing can stand against your might, as you always have. But I say this with the utmost glee and unshamed happiness. You are not the biggest threat around anymore. That new biggest threat, however, has not done anything bad to us. No, no, far from it. Our galaxies have never had such effective inventors as they, nor seen the sheer torrent of ideas that flow from them to us, through us, and then back to them for further refinement. The entire pan-galactic neighborhood is prospering and starting to advance at a rapid rate, simply by riding the coattails of humans as we give them what we have and see them work with it, doing things we never thought of, and that includes our own societies and economies. They are truly incredible friends, and a welcome addition as far as we are concerned. But go ahead, Foker. Go to Earth. Do make sure, as I said earlier, to go as a friend, though. Nor not at all. For, if you choose otherwise, you may very well conquer the humans planet by planet and star by star until you reach their doorstep. But they will fight like the hell only death wilders can provide. Adapt your own power against you. Slow your advance to a standstill. And even if 
They have to fight you all the way back to the mouth of the few caves of their homeworld. They will eventually turn the tide and push back. And once they start pushing back, if you've managed to make them fear you as much as we used to, they will never stop. They'll burn your worlds to ash and sunder your mighty towers from the sky. They will conquer, they'll consume, and take, and take, and take, until your civilization is ground to dust. They may save some of you. They did with the young ration. At least until they learn what you do and have done to prisoners. Go, Foka, go. And let me watch as you burn for your hubris. End of story. Story number two. The Cannon Race, written by Perilous Platypus. It's when a bill, Admiral Perot Halsic said. When the Exitori did not respond, Perio continued. And it is worth winning. Perio expected some hesitation on the Exitori's part. Even as the campaign was winnable, he was clearly a political loser. Executory Dalayane was less than a year into her term and she was already mired in crisis. Two lost deployments tended to do that. That they had been sent 23 and 56 years before she had arrived into office mattered little. The public did not like to hear about slaughtered colonists, rooted armies and lost worlds, particularly when they could experience the horrors firsthand by tapping into the graphic neurographs careening madly about the interverse. War was unpopular, losing one more so. Ariel sympathized with Della's position. This was unfortunate timing, but timing did not change the facts, and ignoring the facts was folly. They are well within the parameters, Perio tried again, only to be cut off by Della's raised hand. I understand the situation, Admiral. She leaned back at a chair and put her foot down and then kicked, causing the chair to slowly rotate in a circle. Turning about made her look young. She was young. Not that it mattered. She was a killer through and through. Red, born, trained, and tested. One didn't arrive at the Exitari chair at Della's age without being a dupe or a butcher. Della was no dupe. There was little to be gained by pressing onward. Della had all the information he did, and his counsel had already been offered. So... He watched in silence as she twirled, waiting for her answer. After the fifth circuit, she pulled her leg back up and tucked it under her. Returning to her perched position, Peria often saw her occupy. Also, childish. Was it a matter of comfort, or just one more way to make herself appear less than she was? A means of making people underestimate her. The twirling, the perching, the lilting voice, the ever-changing hair. Harrier had studied her closely, and he could never confidently say what she was about. Whenever he felt like he had made inroads, she changed the pattern. Tomorrow, she would be sitting straight, the lift would be gone, and Della before him would be gone. But the Della behind these shifting masks would stay the same. A killer. Perio made sure to never forget that in these interactions. I have decided, Della said. She let the paws follow, her eyes on Perot, daring him to prompt her. Perio did not take the bait. He projected calm and indifference, a stolid military man simply awaiting his orders. We will deploy. Perio's surprise must have shown on his face because the small smirk now appeared on Della's. Surprised, Admiral? Perio shrugged. It is not the decision your predecessor would have made. The Exitari giggled now. Giggling was also not something her predecessor would have done. No, I suppose not. The giggle died out. But I'm not my predecessor. Now am I? No, executory, you are not. Della tapped a finger to her and looked slightly upwards. I wonder what the past executory Solari would have done. The tapping stopped and her eyes came back to Perio's. What do you think? Perio shrugged. He had little desire to offer her and engage in the topic of the past executory. Not out of any sense of loyalty for the, uh, 
craven politician that Solari would have been, but more because little could be gained from a member of the military speculating as to the motives and goals of a civilian command. Della huffed out a sigh. Ah, oh, how very diplomatic of you, Admiral. And just when I thought that we were going to be friends. I am not very friendly, Heria replied. Those types are makes of our very best friends. Low maintenance. She leaned forward, closing the distance between them. Solari would have tucked his sack up into his crack and pocketed so hard his shriveled balls would have turned to diamonds. Heria blinked. The giggle returned. Yes, well, um, was all Perio could think to offer. The writing is on the wall, Admiral, literally. She gestured towards the data being projected against the wall beside them, depicting the various campaigns and their last known status. We fight or we lose. The politics are fact, and perhaps so am I, but I am young enough to actually experience the consequences of inaction. She gestured towards the wall, and a new overlay appeared depicting a dense set of calculations tied to various campaigns along with threat assessments. Barrio stared at the wall. The overlay had not come from him. It seemed to be a duplication of the particularly bad contingency fork his intelligence resources had assembled, though there were some variances. Where did you get this? The foot unfurled from beneath Della and she kicked off once more. When her back was to him, she spoke. It was there in the data. Some massaging required, a few assumptions on behalf of our nemesis and so forth, but the thrust of it all is quite clear. Her chair came to a stop and her facing him once more. They're in the mud now. In five years, they'll be in the core. If we're lucky, we've got ten years before Earth is a target. We need to deny them a staging ground. Her numbers were even more dire than his own. But he agreed with the sentiment. That is correct. We deploy and defend no. But you just said... She waved her hand again, and the overlay shifted. A new set of calculations appeared, along with a set of lines emerging from Earth in a variety of directions, each line connected with another planet. Some then had lines emerging from them, regardless of the intervening stops. All lines eventually headed in the same direction. The frontier. Perio corrected himself. No, not the frontier. The border. The ever-collapsing line between them and the Gorm. We deploy and destroy, Admiral. Another flick of a hand and a new image appeared, depicting a long, oblong shape with a series of rings in front of it. Some breakthroughs have been achieved. Is that... Rario drifted off. It is. The cannon is ready, Admiral. Della said, fixing him with an intense stare. Traversal at a fraction of the time, at orders of magnitude less cost. Perio had heard about the area of research, but always in the context of resupply. It was a theoretical way to send logistical support to the deployments without the cost of building up a full interstellar ship. No one had discussed utilizing it for actually sending troops. They would have no way back. Perhaps I'm misunderstanding, Executor. No, Admiral. You are understanding perfectly. It would be a one-way trip, Perio said. Just like the rest of them... I can't see the Parliament. I will worry about that, Admiral. You worry about how to make it happen once it is approved. Perio turned towards the wall and began to count. I'll save you the time. 73 campaigns, 22 directs in the initial, 12 harvest colonies to fund, and 51 secondaries. 680 million people deployed in total. How, oh, um, how will you convince them? Perio asked. It's simple. I'll give them a taste of the Atlantic. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.